How's it going guys? Welcome back to the video. I realized I didn't record an intro for my uh, field exercise, so this is the intro that I'm recording after. There's going to be no spoilers, but I am going to talk quickly because there's a lot of information that I want to cover. First, let's talk about what the purpose of this video and this exercise is. Gaston, the tech prepper, uh, KT7RUN, over on his channel does this series called No Random Contacts. And the goal of No Random Contacts is to test a communication plan out in the field to see if you can contact a specific individual. He does, he's done this series with a lot of other operators, but when I saw that, I wanted to give my own spin to it and say, okay, I would like to do this without any offline tools and kind of bring up the idea of if we aren't able to establish communication, what happens next? And so I drew up this plan, a communication plan, and uh, it goes through both assumptions and goals and rules, and then it goes on to a pace plan, the primary alternate contingency and emergency, which is gonna be voice, JSA direct, um, PSK 31, followed by, finally by uh, computer encoded CW. We decided not to do that because it was just a little short notice to get that set up technically. And then it goes to a time window. It goes by days of the week and times to set up uh, that we are able to try to make that contact. Everything's in Zulu time. Uh, the goal was to exchange a weather report or uh, temperature in our case, as well as a UTM grid. The last part of the document uh, is just basically our UTM grid locations, latitude, longitude, and our capabilities. The reason that it's there is because the goal was to completely use all offline tools and the only the information in this document to establish communication exercise. This document was sent out a few weeks ago and me and Gaston uh, went over it. He had some feedback that he, he gave me that uh, I incorporated in and we touched it up together and we came up with a solid communication plan. So the goal was to get out and um, basically exchange the temperature and grid locations off grid uh, with no other means of contact with each other. The rules were we are not to use any type of uh, man-made structures for our TANA supports or anything that would otherwise uh, ensure the success of this mission here. Uh, everything that we used in the video uh, was things, or the, uh, by the rules, were things that um, we didn't necessarily have to have. One of the things that I used was an app that let me do calculations on azimuth for in, uh, UTM grid locations, for example, so that I could orient my antenna the right way. Everything was done offline. Everything was done off grid. Uh, we each had a copy of the communication plan and that was the only information that we used uh, to contact each other. I'm not going to spoil the video and tell you what happened or how long that it took, uh, but I would like to give a special uh, note to the antenna that I used because I didn't give it much light in the video. One of the X factors that I did in this video was I used the RF-1944 military antenna. And I have it here, I'm just going to show you a few pieces, but here's the ballon, and this will get a video all of its own. Here's the ballon, and what makes this antenna unique is it has a terminating load, is what they call it, which is just a resistive load that's typically grounded by this ground wire that you see here. And what this terminating load does is ensures a good SWR across the entire uh, spectrum that it's rated for. It's good for military use because we use automatic link acquisition to scan through a bunch of frequencies and we don't necessarily have, give our radios time to sit in tune and we don't want uh, the troops to uh, mess up radios with bad SWR either. So I've actually opted in for this um, challenge to detach the resistive loads in the ground rods uh, because I believe that it could make the antenna less efficient if you have a tuner. So that's one of the uh, arguments that I want to propose to anybody, any of you seasoned operators, you think it would be more efficient to use a resistive load grounded at the ends of your dipole or an antenna tuner. And now, of course, a resonant dipole is going to be the most uh, effective antenna, but with this trade-off, I'm just curious on what you all think. Anyways, that's the X Factor. I did use the RF-1944 uh, throughout the entire video, and uh, that's it. I'm going to go ahead and get into it, and I hope you guys enjoy. Uh, it was a great journey. This is one of the most rewarding but difficult contacts I've ever made in amateur radio. If you all have never drawn up a communication plan and tried to uh, pitch it to one of your friends or your group and, and act on it without any other mode of communication to facilitate it, I uh, really uh, advise that you do so if you are intending to use your amateur radio uh, for emergency use because you will run into all sorts of issues that you could never imagine 
And it's only through practice and repetition that you actually figure out what you need to do to make it successful. But let's go ahead and get into the video. Thanks for watching. So I took my MGRS grid, his MGRS grid, and we calculated it to be, well, I just calculated it with an offline um, calculator to be 261 degrees. And that would get me to point back toward the car. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and string up the inverted V and I'll put the antenna out kind of like this, facing that way, 261 degrees, and hopefully that'll do the trick. All right. All right, so quick update. Um, that was probably one of the most awful antenna setups I've ever attempted to make. It took, I'm not kidding, it took hours. I got one of my my throw lines stuck. Thank God I brought it back up. It's, it's getting pretty late outside, but it looks like I got everything up and running before uh, it was completely dark. I've got one leg going out into the woods over here. I know it's, the camera has trouble focusing. It's just really dark outside. And then I have one that's uh, going out to a civilization over here to the actual campground. So I'm not completely off the grid here, but uh, um, it's spotty cell signal and, and I don't have power. This is this is my power and solar. So um, now we're just kind of, uh, we're going to come back up about 30 minutes for the exercise, run through our modes again, make sure everything's going to work. Um, and hopefully uh, we'll we'll see if we can't make this 80 meter contact. All right, so we got kind of settled in. I got the radio gear set up. It should be ready to go. It's night time, so we just start a little fire in the fire pit, roasted some s'mores, roasted some, some hot dogs for dinner, and uh, had some fun with the wife and the dog. So here in about five and a half hours, it's gonna be go time for that first shot. We'll see how it goes. Um, and here in about seven minutes, we're gonna start calling uh, uh, Gaston and see if we can't get a hold of him. Uh, we'll do that for 15 minutes and then after 15 minutes we're going to swap over to our alternate which is a JSA call and uh, we are betting beforehand we're thinking that this is probably going to be the way that we go and judging by the, um, the amount of noise on this thing right now um we'll be lucky honestly to do that but what's this see what happens kilo tango seven romeo uniform november this is kilo november four mike kilo bravo all right so we're looking at probably switching to the alternate kind of strange animal that is I tried to call Gaston um, for about 10 11 minutes um, on voice and it looks like we're gonna have to go ahead and switch to our alternate which is JSA call and I'm not gonna waste any more power on voice I've tried to call him for 10 or 11 minutes but I just want to show you guys if the camera will pick it up like this is constant 9 plus noise for uh, for no reason and I'm in a campground, so it could be generators that are running, but basically this whole band is more than likely unusable. The only thing that's going to salvage it is if um, if digital can punch through this uh, static. I tried calling him a whole bunch, but, you know, obviously this is like an off-grid scenario. I'd, I can't call him up to see if he heard me or not. That's not how it works in real life. So I don't know if he heard me or not, but I just know that if I'm going to hear him, he's going to have to be loud. Um, and that's just all there is to it. I think we're picking him up. There was a message. Show you guys what that looked like. There was a bright, some type of signal here. And I hope that's him, but it was very small. It wasn't on slow mode. Let's see, plan. 
gonna open up FL Rig and FL Digi, and we're gonna go PSK31. All right, good morning. It is currently about 11.50 Zulu time, which means that I am 10 minutes away from the second contact window. It's pretty early in the morning. Uh, the way I had this laid out, it's still 80 meters, uh, which is kind of weird. Uh, but uh, if we don't get it this time with this 80 meters, the next time I believe is 20 and then 240. So I usually have a lot more success with those and especially this time of day. So uh, I'm gonna cross my fingers and hope that we get this done on 80 meters this time. But since it's daytime, maybe I can show you guys a little bit of uh, the antenna setup. So this is the go box here. It's a couple seats, um, my book and the computer, and the communication plan. But this wire goes all the way up, 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 to the trees. Kind of mixed up in some leaves over there, but I think they're like 80 foot legs. And one leg extends all the way down and ties to a tree over there. And the other leg, it's so hard to see because they are like green. It goes into the woods like that way. And they're about 10 feet off the ground, the legs are. But yeah, so this is the setup that I am using. Tango 7, Romeo Uniform, November. This is Kilo, November 4, Mike Kilo Bravo. Do you copy? We saw his CQ message, <clears throat> and this computer screen's a little dim. I don't know if the phone will be able to see it, but we did get his message. See the camera focus here. Uh, might have to turn up the brightness. And now we're trying to get back to him, but as we are transmitting, he was too. It's something that maybe we should put in the AAR um, organized transmit, so we were not transmitting over top of each other. Okay, good. We are getting a message back. I'll show you guys the, the conversation exchange after, you know. Partial copy on UTM. Okay. Well, we almost got the message he was sending, but someone's intentionally interfering, so. All right, yeah, so we are getting some kind of willful interference, and it's because probably we're using digital modes on a section of the band that typically they're not used in, whatever. We're using a small band bandwidth, they can move, there's plenty of room. But uh, now I just need his grid to really finish this up. Because um, I haven't actually copied it. And that's one of the pieces of information I want to exchange. But I know he has my grid, and I know he has my weather. He knows I have his weather, so that's the only piece of information that we're missing. So if we can get that exchange, which shouldn't be a problem, then we will be good to go. And hopefully these guys that are interfering, just stop it for a minute, you know? Just stop it. Oh, here we go. Hopefully this is the grid. If it is, this is indexed. We've exchanged all the bits of information that we need. Um, and it looks like we'll be to go. And we've been using this for like 20 minutes now, so we're not stepping on those guys. They're kind of just stepping on us. Okay. If we can get this next message, I think we're alright though. Oh my god, the guy's yelling. Alright, cool, we got the first part of the grid. 12, Sierra, E40575. That's it. We acknowledge each other's grids. Well, I need to acknowledge his grid. And that just lets him know that we're kind of indexing. Uh, well, of course, this is agreed upon. Like, in the plan, all of this has been 
agreed upon of when we're going to index and all of all of this stuff has been pre-planned. So I just realized I didn't actually film an outro while I was out there. So this is my outro. So first, I definitely want to thank my YouTube members, Scott, Pasternak, Emil, Vanderwalt, Google Must Die, Van Thickle, uh, Van Thick, sorry, Bart Killam, and James Jenner. If I butcher your names, let me know. And also, I just want to make sure you guys, if you haven't checked out the Tech Preppers channel, Obviously, he was the inspiration and in what led to this video and this, this series that he does. So go check him out, and that'll be it. 73 to you.